Hare Krishna. Just let me know. When... Oh, five minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can set my Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Om Namo Bhagavate. So today we're reading Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 11, The Universal Form, Text Number 48. Naveda yagya yanir na danir na chakriya bir na tapo biru grai evam rupa sakya aham nareloke drushtam twad anye na kuru pravira yagya yanir na danir na tapo biru grai evam rupa sakya aham nareloke Drushtam twad anyena kuru pravira. Naveda yagya yaner na daner na chakriyat bir na tapo biru grai evam rupa shakya aham nereloke. Drushtam twad anyena kuru pravira. I'll read the synonyms. Na, never. Veda yagna, by sacrifice. Adya yanai, or Vedic study, na, never, danai, never, cha, also, kriyabi, by pious activities, na, never, tapobi, by serious, I, niraloke, in this material world, drashtam, anyena, by another, Kuru Pravira, O best among the Kuru warriors. Translation, O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mine, for neither by studying the Vedas, nor by performing sacrifice, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances can I be seen in this form in the material world. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Good. Who can have divine vision? Divine means godly. Unless one attains the status of divinity as a demigod, he cannot have divine vision. And what is a demigod? It is stated in the Vedic scriptures that those who are devotees of Lord Vishnu are demigods. Vishnu Bhaktasmrito Daiva. Those who are atheistic, that is, who do not believe in Vishnu, or who recognize only the impersonal part of Krishna as the Supreme, cannot have the divine vision. It is not possible to decry Krishna and at the same time have the divine vision. One cannot have the divine vision without becoming divine. In other words, those who have divine vision can also see like Arjuna. The Bhagavad Gita gives the description of the universal form. Although this, this description was unknown 
to everyone before Arjuna. Now one can have some idea of the Vishwarup after this incident. Those who are actually divine can see the universal form of the Lord. But one cannot be divine without being a pure devotee of Krishna. The devotees, however, who are actually in the divine nature and who have divine vision are not very much interested in seeing the universal form of the Lord. As described in the previous verse, Arjuna desired to see the four-handed form of Lord Krishna as Vishnu, and he was actually afraid of the second words, just like Veda Yajna Yanai, which refers to studying Vedic literature and the subject matter of sacrificial regulations. Veda refers to all kinds of Vedic literature, such as the four Vedas, Rig, Yajur, Sama, and Atarva, and the 18 Puranas, the Upanishads, and the Vedanta Sutra. One can study these at home or anywhere else. Similarly, there are Sutras, Kalpa Sutras, and Mimamsa Sutras for studying the method of sacrifice. Danai refers to charity, which is offered to a suitable party such as those who are engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, the Brahmanas and the Vaishnavas. Similarly, pious activities refers to the Agnihotra and the prescribed duties of the different castes and the voluntary, voluntary acceptance of some bodily pains is called tapasya. So one can perform all these, can accept bodily penances, give charity, study the Vedas, etc. But unless he is a devotee like Arjuna, it is not possible to see that universal form. Those who are impersonalists are also imagining that they are seeing the universal form of the Lord. But from Bhagavad Gita, we understand that the impersonalists are not devotees to see the universal form of the Lord. Who create incarnation, an ordinary human to be an incarnation. But this is all foolishness. We should follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita. Otherwise, there is no possibility of attaining perfect spiritual knowledge. Although Bhagavad Gita is considered the preliminary study of the science of God, still it is so perfect that it enables one to distinguish what is what. The followers of a pseudo-incarnation may say that they have also seen the transcendental incarnation of God the universal form, but that is unacceptable because it is clearly stated here that unless one becomes a devotee of Krishna, one cannot see the universal form of God. So one, first of all, has to become a pure devotee of Krishna. Then he can claim that he can show the universal form of what he has seen. A devotee of Krishna cannot accept false incarnations or followers of false incarnations. So, the sense of Bhaktivedanta Swami purport to chapter 11, text number 48. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanye Na Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yayam Rupa Kadam Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha 
ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಸಕ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗನ ರಗ್ನತನ್ ಬಿಥಂ ತಂ ಸಚೈವಂ ಸರ್ವಯತ್ವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಕಾಂಶ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಭೂಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಂಠ ರಾಧಾ ಕಂಠ ನಮಸ್ತ ಗೌರಂಗೇ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಭುವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಚಕೌಪಾತರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಬಾಯೇ ಬಚ ಪತಿತ ಪವಾನ್ ಎಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭುಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ಸತಿ ದೇವಿ ಘೋರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯ ಪಾರಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸರಿ ಗೋರ್ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ So we're reading this 11th chapter. Lord Krishna had been asked by Arjuna to show the form by which he enters into this material world. In the previous chapter, the 10th chapter, Lord Krishna had described how he enters in the world. He described his unlimited 10th chapter vibhuti yoga so in the 10th chapter lord krishna spoke uh many of krishna's vibhutis i think someone counted them 82 there's 82 vibhutis there krishna's describing how he appears in the material world right of flowing rivers i am the ganga of immovable things i am himalayas of mountains i am meru of beasts i am the lion all of these different things so arjuna had heard it but krishna's opulences are unlimited so krishna couldn't describe unlimitedly so arjuna asked krishna to show these opulences you know we say one picture is worth a thousand words so arjuna wanted to see he thought seeing is better than hearing prabhupada also explains the reason why krishna showed this universal form at arjuna's request was to establish krishna's position uh practically krishna by speaking had established himself philosophically or theoretically but arjuna wants that krishna will establish himself as the supreme uh in a in a manner which is acceptable by everyone which cannot be con contest vishwarup this form by which he enters into the universe Srila Prabhupada describes the universal form as a godless display of opulence. In other words, for devotees it's not very attractive. It doesn't have much significance. Why does Arjuna want to see it? Just simply to establish Krishna's divinity over everyone else. that somebody else if somebody else is actually god then let them prove it let them show that 
universal form. So Srila Prabhupada, in the purport there, he talks about bogus incarnations, imposters who claim they're actually incarnations of God, God are all described in the scripture, evidence from the scriptures established Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as being the incarnation of the Lord in the Kali Yuga by quoting verses like the verse in the 11th canto where uh, Karabhajana Muni was describing to Nimiraj the Lord's incarnations in different ages. And when he came to Kali Yuga, then he quoted the verse, Krishna Varnam Tivisha Krishnam Sangopangastra Parshadam Yagnai Sankirtan Prae Yajantihi Sumedasaha. Of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because it describes how the Lord will come in the Kali Yuga and he will come in a color which is not blackish. Krishna means blackish, but in the Kali Yuga he is a Krishna. He is not blackish. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, comes in the golden color. And he comes along with his different associates to perform the Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names. Krishna Varna, their occupation is Krishna, business is Krishna. Talking about Krishna, serving Krishna, Visha a Krishnam, Sango Pangustra Parshadam, Yagnai Sankirtan Prai. In the Kali Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy name. So, Lord Chaitanya's main activity when he met with the devotees was Sankirtan. First of all, the Sankirtan took place at the home of uh, Srivas Pandit, the nocturnal kirtans, every evening for more than one year after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken initiation at Gaya, then he came back to Mayapur and every evening the devotees would meet in Srivas Thakur, Srivas Pandit's home and they would have kirtan. Then of course Lord Chaitanya took sannyas and he left Mayapur, but when he was Travelling everywhere, he was constantly chanting the holy name and giving the holy name to people and requesting people to worship Krishna. In Jagannath Puri, where Lord Chaitanya resided for 18 years of his manifest pastimes, constantly he was performing Sankirtan with everyone. In Mayapur, it was restricted to only confidential associates. But when the Lord, after taking sannyas, then he was giving the Sankirtan to everyone. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya established himself as the incarnation of, for the Kali Yuga. Not only that verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's another verse which is in the Mahabharata, which uh, describes how the Lord comes and how he will, uh, and initially he will be in the householder ashram and then later on he will take sannyas and he will be very peaceful and he will have the golden color. Uh, so uh, then there's uh, another verse also in Srimad Bhagavatam where Prahlad Maharaj describes about the Lord coming. So like this, different scriptural evidence is there to support Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But other people, they come along and they claim they're an incarnation of this age without any scriptural reference. So this is not acceptable. One who is actually the incarnation of the Lord then they can also show the universal form to others. But Prabhupada describes in the purport in great detail the importance that to actually see the, the universal form, one has to be the pure devotee. 
without being pure, completely pure, without being divine, then we will not be able to actually see the divine form of the Lord. So pure devotee, Rupa Goswami describes the pure devotee, Anyabilasita sunyam, jnana karma janavritam, anukoyena krishna nushilanam bhakti uttama. The the pure devotee will engage in service to Krishna without any material desire, no desire for fruitive activity, and no desire for philosophical speculation. He's simply to Krishna or Krishna's different expansions and incarnation to the Lord and His different forms. Uh, that is the highest devotion. So to actually see the Lord, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how He's not visible to everyone. Uh, one verse is there, Naham prakisha sarvatma yoga maya sanmavrita mudo yam nabijanati loka mama Lord Krishna is saying, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them I am covered by my eternal foolish and unintelligent people like that who claim that their gurus are incarnations of God, although they have no qualification. They don't follow any principles, they don't keep any standards, and they don't teach according to Shastra. So it's important for us to be able to understand who is actually God and who, who are the false gods, who are actually the imposters, who are claiming that they are incarnations or that they are the, the Lord. Uh, when Lord Chaitanya came there in Jagannath Puri, uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the Lord. Brother-in-law, Gopinathacharya told him, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he is no ordinary person. He is the Lord himself. But Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya said, no, no, Kali Yuga, the Lord does not come. The Lord is known as Tree Yuga. There is one name of the Lord like that, Tree Yuga, because in the Kali Yuga, the Lord comes in a concealed form. He does not reveal himself as the Lord, because in the Kali Yuga there will be many imposters. There will be so many people claiming to be God. Therefore, the Lord does not direct, he does not come himself in the Kali Yuga, but he, he comes in a covered form. And Gopinath Acharya also pointed this out to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, telling him that certainly the Lord does come in Kali Yuga, because the Lord has stated that He comes in every age, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, in every age the Lord appears. And Gopinath Acharya then, this way he defeated Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and told him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually He is the Lord. You have to understand it yourself. So, we're talking here about the universal form, this universal form which Arjuna had desired to see. He desired to see it, but when he did see it, it was not so much pleasing to him. We find, of course, many people, they say, I want to see God. And sometimes people say, if there's really a God, we should be able to see Him. I want to see Him. So how can we see God? When Srila Prabhupada was asked these kinds of questions, sometimes he would reply, 
In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the light of the sun and the moon. If, if you see the light of the sun and the light of the moon, you should know this is a form of God. When you drink water, the taste of water, this is also God. So the Lord appears in so many different forms, in so many different ways. You just have to be able to see him, to understand that this is God. Just like we were celebrating Nishinga Chaturasi, so when, when, Prala, when Prahlad's father was trying to kill him, Prahlad saw all the different attempts to kill him. He saw, he saw that this is Krishna, this is the Lord coming in so many different ways. He was put into burning fire. He saw fire, this is the energy of Krishna, the most pure element in the material creation. When they gave our, when they gave Prahlad poison, Prahlad thought, poison. He thought that's my uncle, because Lakshmi came from the ocean of milk, and Lakshmi is the consort of Lord Nishingadev, of Lord Vishnu, and I am all sons of Lord Vishnu, so Lakshmi is my mother, and the poison of milk. So. That uh, poison, that is also like my uncle. So when the great Prahlad poison could not have any effect on him, because he simply saw everything in relation to Krishna. So Krishna consciousness is like that. We want to see everything in relation to Krishna. Actually, everything is in relation to Krishna. It is all his energies. So the Lord has different energies. He has his spiritual energy, his material energy. We are also the energy of the Lord, the living entities. We are the marginal potency of the Lord. And the Lord has also so many of his different expansions and incarnations. So this universal form this is one feature of the Lord, which is presented to people, just like when we read Srimad Bhagavatam in the second canto, uh, Maharaj Parikshit is being guided by Sukadeva Goswami, and Sukadeva Goswami presents to him this concept of the universal form of the Lord how one can see everything in the, in the universe in relation to the Lord. Just like the rivers which flow are like the veins on the body of the Lord. And the trees are like hair on the body of the Lord. The sun is bodily limbs of the Lord. The higher planets are the upper parts of the body and the lower planets are the lower limbs of the body of the Supreme Lord. This concept of the universal form is given to people with difficulty to, under, to accept the divine form of the Lord, not spiritual. We look at the deity, we don't think the deity is just a statue, material elements. We see the deity as being transcendental. Satchit Ananda Vigraha, the incarnation of the Lord in the form of the deity, Archa Vigraha. The Lord incarnates in the deity form. People, they have difficulty to understand this. They look at the deity, they can see to see the transcendence. So, people like that, it's easier for them to hear about the universal form, to hear how the different elements of the material creation can all represent one form, a body of the Lord. However, here in this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is describing to actually see this form, you have to become very pure. You have to become this form. We can contemplate it in our mind. But Arjuna 
How did Arjuna see it? He was given the divine eyes. Lord Krishna gave him the divine eyes so he could see that form. It's, we, tried, we can contemplate it in the mind, but Arjuna actually saw it. It was a special gift to Krishna, by Krishna, that he gave Arjuna the ability to see that form. And Lord Krishna explains that there's no way materially you can qualify to see that form. You can't see it by studying the Vedas. You cannot see it just by doing great austerities. You can't see it by giving charity. I don't have the text before me right now, but in the text, uh, Lord Krishna describes so many different ways. And none of these ways qualify us to actually see that Vishwarup. And Prabhupada explains the qualification to see it is you have to be a pure devotee. You have to be completely free of all material desires, completely free of all sinful activities, no karma, your karma has all been destroyed. You have to be completely uh, the, uh, divine, completely pure, because you want to see the divine. Just like some people, but of course we always get foolish people who come and say, oh yes, I've see, I see the universal form, I can see. For the, imp for the impersonalists, this is the goal. They want to see this kind of form because they, they're thinking ultimately there's only the oneness. So this form is just a means to merging into the oneness. The impersonalists, the, 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 the atheists, materialistic people, they can contemplate the universal form for them, not for devotees. Arjuna saw it, it's not what he wanted to see, not pleasing. What is pleasing is to see actually the form of Krishna, his two-armed form, his original form. That is the most pleasing. But to actually see the form of the deity, two arms, one has to be a devotee. If we see the deity and we think, if we simply think of the deity as being a statue, then Shastra say, Achari Vishnu Shiladir Gurushu Naramatir Vaishnave Jati Buddhi Yashyava Narakisa. That, that person who thinks of the deity just to be made of material elements, then they're a resident in hell. So we want to understand properly how to see the deity. We should see the deity through the eye of scriptures, not just with our material vision. We're not so much advanced that we can simply use our material eyes to see the divine form properly. But if we see guided by knowledge with the scriptures, then we can actually see Krishna. That is called Shastra Chaksus, seeing through the eye of scriptures. So that's why it's important for us that we not only chant Hare Krishna, but we also read, we study the scriptures, we have to learn the philosophy and understand how God actually appears and who is actually the incarnation of God, who are, who, who are the bona fide incarnations of the Lord, what are their activities. Devotional service which is done according to the scriptures then that is proper. But if we simply act independently without being guided by the scriptures, that gives us the verse, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Panchara Triki Vidim Vinam Aikantiki Harer Bhaktir Utpatayaiva Kalpati. Devotional service. 
Vaishnava. Just like one time Prabhupada was in New Vrindavan and devotee was telling Prabhupada that Krishna is speaking to him. And Prabhupada said, who does Krishna speak to? Who does Krishna communicate with? And Prabhupada quoted from Bhagavad Gita, Desham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvatam dadami buddhi yogam tam yinamam upayantite Krishna says, to those who are constantly devoted to me and worship me with love, then I give the understanding by which they can. Love, that's a very cheap word in the material world. But in the spiritual sense, it's the highest thing. Pure love, that one wants to give everything for Krishna. One will sacrifice everything for the pleasure of Krishna. And that is why the gopis of Vrindavan, they were accepted as the highest devotees. That they sacrificed their chastity for Krishna. When Krishna called them, they left everything. Some were even. They, they came anyway. They came immediately to respond to Krishna calling them. So that is the highest uh, sacrifice, to give up everything, even one's own good name in society for the, ser for the pleasure of Krishna. So impersonalists, those who are worshipping the universal form, they cannot understand these subject matters. These are very confidential subject matters which can only be understood by devotion, by those who are engaged in devotional service. For the impersonalists, they're simply contemplating this universal feature of the Lord. They're simply thinking, yes, this world. And they, and they see this universal form and they know it also as temporary. It's a temporary form. And they're thinking, this is the form of the, the Lord, ultimately everything is zero or everything is one. Therefore Prabhupada's mission was to defeat all of these bogus philosophies. We're presenting that actually everything is not void. The uni contemplating the universal form, it's there, it can be used to help one to understand a higher purpose. Srila Prabhupada explains in the Srimad Bhagavatam that that contemplation of the universal form is only good if it brings one to take up devotional service, if one will take up the mood of becoming the servant of the Lord, then it's useful. Otherwise, no use. Just as Prabhupada described it, a godless display of opulence. We want to not just be bewildered by some opulence. So that universal form is not the supreme form. Lord Krishna had described in the 10th tenth, tenth chapter, at the end of the 10th chapter, what is actually supreme. He said, Ekam shenas to jagat. By a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire universe. Right? That single fragment of the Lord, that is the super soul. The Lord is there as the super soul, his expansion pervading and supporting everything in the material world. It's not that the universal form is the supreme form. So these are some points about the, this verse. Maybe we'll open up now, ask if there's any questions. Um, yes, Maharaj, there's two questions from Facebook. So I'll read for you the first question, uh, then later I will read for you the second question. Um, so the question is, Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance, Maharaj. Why did Lord Chaitanya confide in the Sankirtana 
among his associates only before he took sannyas. Hare Krishna, Charam, Charanam Bhuja Das Prabhu. Why did Lord Chaitanya have a confidential kirtan only with his associates before he took sannyas? Well, one possible reason is that, you know, when, when you're with the devotees, then it has more taste. You can relish the kirtan more. It's much more powerful and satisfying. And they come to the kirtan. It, it doesn't have quite the same effect. It takes away the potency of the holy name. But the holy name, when it's chanted by devotees, those who are seriously practicing the holy name, chanting the holy name, and when they come together, and when they do kirtan, then it's very, very powerful. But when you bring everyone, you open up, let everyone come in, it, it's a different mood. People are, you know, they don't have that taste for the holy name, and they don't and parallel pastime in Krishna Lila is now when Krishna does Rasa Lila is only his intimate pure devotees there. Even Mother Lakshmi couldn't get in there. And Lord Shiva to get in there he had to transform himself, he had to become a gopi first. So Rasa Lila is very confidential. Why? Because it's, a, it's the most confidential of the Lord's pastimes. It's only for his pure devotees. And similarly, Lord Chaitanya doing kirtan in the home of Sri Thakur, it was his very confidential pastime. It was parallel to Rasa Lila. Just as Krishna performed, Krishna took birth in Mathura, but his pastimes were more in Goku and Ravan. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya took birth at the Yoga Peeth, but his pastimes were more in the home of Srivas Pandit. So it was there at Srivas Pandit that Lord Chaitanya had these nocturnal kirtans, and he only wanted the devotees there. And when other people came in who were not devotees, then Lord Chaitanya would stop the kirtan. One time, uh, it was the, the brahmachari who only drank milk and fruit and Lord Chaitanya was having kirtan. He said, no, I'm not feeling ecstasy anymore. Something is wrong. I'm not feeling the same ecstasy. And at that test, and apologized to Lord Chaitanya. And Lord, don't think you can develop love of Krishna just by drinking milk and fruit, having fruits just by being a brahmachari, that's not the qualification. Lord Chaitanya rectified that brahmachari's thinking. And then also, Srivas Pandit, was it his mother-in-law was there or something? She also wanted, and she also had to go out. She was the, the, because the mood was different. Just the fact that they were hiding there in the room disturb Lord Chaitanya's mood. So similarly with Lord Krishna's Rasa Leela, who can go there to Rasa Leela? They say anybody who goes there into that Rasa Stella in the night, the next morning they'll be a madman. They'll become, they'll be simply mentally deranged. They'll never recover. Nobody, everybody leaves there. Even the animals, the monkeys, the birds, they all know. It's a very special private affair, private place, very private activity taking place. So Lord Chaitanya's kirtan is like that. After he took sannyas, then the holy name is for everyone. He's giving, go, going everywhere, giving everyone the chance to chant the holy name. A different mood. But in the beginning, while he was in Mayapur, he was relishing that holy name in a special manner with the devotees. And similarly, then later on, 
he would only discuss Krishna with, the, you know, he had his three and a half intimate associates. There was Swarup Damodar, Ramananda Rai, Siki Mahiti, and Siki Mahiti's sister. They were the only ones who Lord Chaitanya discussed the confidential topics of Lord Krishna with. Because he, he can relish these topics in their association. But he gave the holy name, the kirtan was going on for everyone. Give everyone a chance to get some purification. Bring the Sankirtan movement out there and give everyone a chance. Let them all get some mercy of the holy name. But the Lord also wanted the intimate, very pure devotees. So it's a Okay. So I'll read for you the second question. Uh, what is Sri Krishna Sorry? message for all mothers? As today is also Mother's Day. I read again for you, Maharaj. What is Sri Krishna's message for all mothers? How and mothers should be as. Oh, today is Mother's Day. So, what is Lord Krishna's message for all mothers? <laughs> oh, Krishna. Difficult one for me. <laughs> I don't know what is the mother. Uh, Krishna's message for all mothers. Well, certainly a noble responsibility into the world. The mother wants to child. The mother will sacrifice everything for her children. as a mother is to give krishna consciousness to their to her offspring to her children to see that they are that they develop their atta attachment and their taste for service to lord krishna that is the, the real duty of the mother become a parent unless you can deliver your children from birth and death a child or children you have a duty a responsibility from birth and death. Mother also, especially the mother, because she is the authority in the home. So she, her duty is to see that her child is developing her, her good character, her good qualities, divine qualities. Srila Prabhupada did take care of him. Uh, when he didn't want to go to school, his mother hired someone to take him to school. And uh, his mother liked to give whatever, she would, she, she would of course cook for him. And she would, at one point Prabhupada, as a child, he had some sickness and the doctor was called. And the doctor prescribed, you have to give your child chicken soup. But the father and mother, they had never given their child any non-vegetarian food. Prabhupada said, throughout his life, he had never tasted the non-vegetarian food. So mother, was, mother and father were very reluctant. Chicken soup, they'd never done it. But still, the doctor tells them, if you don't give chicken soup, child will die. So some chicken and she cooked it. And when they put some in the mouth, then Prabhupada vomited it. He said, he, they put some in the mouth, immediately he vomited. So then the parents understood, okay, we're not going to force him. We cannot give him any more. So like that, that's a good mother and father that they want to help their child as much as possible to, to keep the good qualities. Similarly, Prabhupada's parents said, that's good. It's good you don't like her. You won't be too attacked. So like this, Prabhupada gave him very wonderful training. The mother, duty of all mothers is to Ensure that the children develop the good character, the good qualities, keeping everything clean, teaching them to be obedient, to be respectful, 
helping them to cultivate their God consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Lord Krishna, he is the father, the mother. We say something, the mother is the Vedas, right? The scriptures, they tell about the father. So mother also, mother in the home, her duty is to also teach about where you may be the mother for some time, but you know, you all, the mother also has her mother. So the original mother is the Vedas and the original father of everyone is Lord Krishna. So the duty of every mother and father is to teach about the Supreme Mother and Father, to give respect for the scriptures and to worship the Supreme Father, Lord Krishna. I think this is Lord Krishna's... Yes? Any other? Yeah, there is two more questions, Maharaj, but before that, uh, sorry, there's three more questions from Facebook, but before that, we'll take one question from our Zoom participant. Is there a question who would like to ask you? There are two parts, uh, which is uh, the Vaidhi Bhakti and the Raganuga Bhakti. So the question here is, I'm a bit confused with the Raganuga Bhakti. How do you know the difference between Sahajiya, uh, Sahajiya? How do we know the difference between Sahajaism and Author, proper Raganuga Bhakti. So the Sahajya will not keep the principles. They will simply make an artificial display of ecstasy, of loving devotion. But they won't be obedient to the scriptures, neglect the principles. Actual practice of Raganuga Bhakti, one will be careful to keep also the principles of Vaidhi Bhakti. Just to come to the level of Raganuga Bhakti doesn't give you the right to neglect all the principles of Vaidhi Bhakti. But the, the point is that on the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, it's, there's more spontaneous devotion. One is naturally inspired to wake up in the morning and he's eager to go to the temple program and to take part in the activities. He's very eager to hear and chant and utilize all of his time in this way. Not that he will neglect the principles of Vaidhi Bhakti, but he will have great enthusiasm, great devotion for all of the practices. The Sahaja, they make a show for a short time and then completely disregard all the principles. You know, they, one minute they can be rolling on the floor in ecstasy, calling the name of Garanga, and the next minute they're outside smoking a cigarette, or having some bidi, or they have a girlfriend, they have some illicit connection with another woman, like that. They don't strictly follow all the principles, but they make a show of being very advanced, very devoted. So like Thank that. you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Maharaj, I'll read for you the, another question. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisance. How can we progress further to performing devotional services without being materially motivated? Your sincere Rati Pukhikadividas. How can we progress in our devotional service without being materially motivated? Well, we should simply want to please Krishna. That is the idea. You want to progress in Krishna consciousness. We don't worry so much about our own self, but we're thinking more about what Krishna wants. We do everything for Krishna. Material motivation, we're doing devotional... We want, maybe, once somebody wants to be regarded as a big devotee, Oh, they're very surrendered, oh, they're very pure, like that, that kind of material motivation. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's not very good, but that, can, that kind of contamination can also go just simply by engaging in devotional service. 
Srila Prabhupada always encouraged the devotees in, to, in their competitive mood. He knew that, you know, all of the devotees were, were, were all neophyte devotees, and we had that materialistic idea, we want to be the best, we want to be recognized. So Prabhupada encouraged that. Okay, go out, distribute books, go out, make devotees, build a temple. One, you know, one temple wants to be better than the other. One temple, is, our deities are the best Prabhupada, right Prabhupada, isn't it? Our deities are the most beautiful, Prabhupada said. <laughs> These kind of things, you know. So Prabhupada encouraged devotees, okay, go ahead, do more. And do. But gradually, gradually we become purified, we lose that kind of consciousness and we become more attached to the activity itself, just to pleasing Krishna, without thinking so much about our own self, our own position. Because the more we do devotional service, the more we're engaged in Krishna's service, the more we will become purified. And that purification makes us humble. It takes away that material consciousness of being the best or doing something well or like we, we realize how fallen we are. Surrender to Krishna, one of the items of surrender to Krishna is Atmani, Atmani Vedanam, that one is uh, without, one is very meek and humble because they realize themselves to be very low and unqualified. So that's the sign that we're advancing. In the neophyte stage, yeah, we, we want to do it for ourselves, to get some material recognition or something like that. But that gradually goes away as we go on with devotional service. Because the process itself, devotional service, is purifying us. It takes away all these kind of bad qualities. Just like we say we put the metal bar in the fire, so the metal bar becomes hot and hotter, takes on all the qualities of a fire. But it takes some time, you have to leave it in the fire. So in the same way we do devotional service, in the beginning we have these kind of concepts that I want to be the best, I want to be really good, I want to be recognized. But gradually these things, are they, they're taken, we lose them. We just simply want service to Krishna. We, reali we realize that service to Krishna is the real goal. And there's nothing more than just trying to do some service. And our service, our own service is very insignificant. What can we do? Krishna is so great, we're so tiny, what can we do? So we go on hearing and chanting and these thoughts about our own self, the, the ahankar, the false ego, the self-prestige, it goes away. We lose it and we just become more absorbed in our spiritual position as a tiny insignificant servant of Krishna. Okay, how are we doing? Any more questions? How can I understand Lord Buddha is an avatar of Lord Vishnu? Yes, well, it's mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. We take the evidence from the scriptures that Lord Buddha appeared. So why did he why does he come as a non why does he come as a, a you know someone opposed to the Vedas? That was necessary. According to the time and circumstances, the Lord came and he had to lead the people away from the Vedas 
because they were doing so much offence to the Vedas. The Brahmanas were encouraging animal slaughter in the name of the Vedic sacrifice. So Lord Buddha came to stop all that Vedic sacrifice and to lead the people away from the Vedas. It was really a reaction against the caste system because the Brahmanas had become corrupt and degraded. So Lord Buddha had to come and lead the people away from the Vedas because the Brahmanas, they're the ones who teach the Vedas. Only the Brahmanas have the authority to teach the Vedas. And the, Bra the Brahmanas had become degraded and corrupted. So Lord Buddha came and led the people away from the Vedas. But Lord Buddha himself, that he is the Lord himself, he is the avatar, and he, by following him, then they get the real purpose of the Vedas. The purpose of the Vedas is to know the Lord. So by following Lord Buddha, they got the mercy of Lord Vishnu. They got the, the, the according to their qualification. Like that. Yeah, Maharaj, uh, so we'll take the final two questions, Maharaj. So uh, one question is, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Can I decide the 108 stotram of Lord Narasimha daily at home? As the COVID-19 pandemic has been going on and on so badly all over the world, we at home pray for the whole world. Please advise Prince Narasimha Maharaj from Lakshmi Sri Krishna. Yes. Yes, it's very nice if you recite the 108 names of Lord Narasimha it's very nice. But, you know, recite them in the mood of pure devotion. Just like when Srila Prabhupada was sick, you know, we wanted to pray also for Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada told us also, pray to Lord Narasimha Dev. And Prabhupada, we asked Prabhupada to give a prayer. And Prabhupada told us, he said, Dear, dear Lord Krishna, if, if you so desire, please save Srila Prabhupada. Right? So we pray to Lord Narasimha Dev and Lord Krishna like this. If you so desire, you please save Srila Prabhupada. So the same way, we can pray to Lord Narasimha Dev. You're chanting the 108 names of Lord Narasimha Dev. Dear Lord Narasimha Dev, if you so desire, please save all of these people suffering from this COVID virus. If you so desire. The Lord is supreme. He's the controller. He is independent. It's up to His will. Okay? question. Uh, my humble greetings, Maharaj. Correct me if I'm wrong. Can we also be able to have a strong devotional attitude from negative conditions, such as from the threefold mysteries, or should there be any more worse condition? Could I have to hear that again? Uh, can Maharaj? Uh, can we also be able to to perceive strong from the negative condition such as from the three four misery or should there be any more worse condition the threefold miseries can there be any worse condition than the threefold miseries is that the question yes yeah yes Maharaj. that's the question No, I, everything is included there in the threefold miseries. You have the miseries by material nature, you have the miseries from other living entities, and you have miseries of our own body and mind. It's all there within these three miseries. You can't get any more misery. There's no other miseries coming. The, the miseries of the material nature the miseries from other living, this virus, this is our other living entities. They're coming, giving us disease, right? So everything, all the suffering, every, all types of suffering, but whatever, it, whatever it is, we can understand it in relation to these three different miseries of the material nature. 
those coming from the other living entities, the mosquitoes, and the virus, and the miseries coming from the material nature, from the Lord Himself through His material nature, and the miseries of the material body and the mind. Yeah, it's all there. You can't get any more miseries than that. It's all, that's enough. <laughs> you won't get any more. <laughs> you want more? <laughs> I don't know. You want to find more misery? You're not, it's not enough for you? Already so much. Krishna Kripa Prabhu Are you there? 